Hello everyone, my name is Allison Robinson and I am the Development and Communications Coordinator for Minnesota Connect Aphasia Now, or MNCAN. We are promoting aphasia awareness and raising funds to support MNCAN's educational programs and support groups. I am pleased to interview a MNCAN participant who will be sharing her story and tips on how to support people with primary progressive aphasia, also known as PPA. She's had a diverse career in advertising, marketing, and creating website content. For over 15 years, she has been a member of the American Society of Botanical Artists and participates in their annual exhibits. She is a master naturalist, so you may find her teaching children about nature through art classes or giving tours at a local nature center. And finally, I want to acknowledge her care partners, husband, daughter, and son, who have provided amazing support and encouragement throughout her journey with PPA. I am happy to welcome Marilyn Maltby. Hello, Marilyn. Hello. Please tell me, how is primary progressive aphasia different from aphasia after a stroke? Well, I understand that aphasia from a stroke can be improved with therapy. Aphasia in PPA cannot be improved. It is progressive and symptoms get worse over time. What are some of the symptoms of PPA? Well, difficulty saying some words was the first obvious symptom for me. Um, during 2020, we were isolated by the pandemic. After more than a year without normal social activities, I thought I was out of practice talking to others. So uh, research experts have defined PPA in three different variants. Depending on the variant, each person has a different set of symptoms. Um, some people have problems remembering words or effortful speech, problems reading or writing, or not understanding other people. How is primary progressive aphasia diagnosed? And do you have any advice for doctors and therapists? I am lucky to have a primary care physician who is knowledgeable in older women's health. When I explained to her that my brain was having problems connecting to my mouth and she heard me talking, that was it. She sent me to testing and neurology. For many people, it takes a long time to diagnose PPA because people and doctors just don't know much about it. My advice to doctors and therapists would be to give hope by referring patients to support groups like MNCAN. Also, learn about PPA, listen to patients, encourage them to participate in support groups. Okay. What is one of the most frustrating things for you 
or others in your support group about PPA? Well, PPA is a loss of verbal expression or understanding, but intelligence is still intact. Um, one spouse of a man with PPA in our support group said her husband looks normal. People say, what's the problem? It takes a lot for her to explain how how he is affected, what he understands, and how to communicate with him. Mostly because PPA is not well known. For me now, PPA means mostly verbal difficulties. I know what I've accomplished accomplished through, uh, throughout my life with my family, through volunteering, and with my career. But nowadays, I hear my speak, my, I hear myself speaking slowly without any ease or quick fluidity that I used to have. Well, it's pride, but I feel embarrassed to talking, talking to people, especially on the phone. Okay. How can you manage PPA? What have you learned? Well, as I slowly lose the ability to speak, I am learning to communicate in other ways. Um, gesturing, slowing down. I do exercises for memory and speech. I read out loud. Um, I made a cue card to order order coffee in Starbucks in case I get confused. And I also uh, attached a card to my dashboard telling that I have PPA in case of an emergency well, when I'm driving. I was shocked and devastated when I was diagnosed. But fortunately, my family was told about MinCan and the eight week um, staying connected program. We all understand more about PPA now and how to communicate with each other as my speech deteriorates. When I was first diagnosed with PPA, it took a long time for me to say it out loud. But MinCan helped me overcome that. And now I tell whoever needs to know the coffee barista, the vet, um, the neighbors, um, the store clerks, um, the staying connected course through MinCan taught us that they, sorry, there are many ways to manage PPA through support groups, um, methods like what they call whatever works, exercises, high-tech gadgets, applications, apps. Um, even Google can help we help even Google can help me with my phone. 
for now I'm um, tidying up our financial records so our kids can take over eventually. That's great information, Marilyn. Uh, last question for you. How can family, friends, and acquaintances support people with PPA? Well, include them in uh, phone calls, visits, outings, go for a walk, play a game, meals out, whatever you normally do with them. Slow down if they need time to speak or listen. Um, learn, about, learn about PPA. You can subscribe to MinCan's newsletter. Um, last, encourage communi communicating with whatever works. I say whatever works. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Marilyn. That was very helpful and informative. If you would like to support MinCan's Staying Connected educational program and support groups, or learn more about PPA, please click on the Give Lively link above this video. Thank you.